Hey, I'm Joy Harjo, and you're watching Poets House Presents right now. Hello, I'm Joy Harjo, and I'm going to be reading from uh, two books and, and then a poem that is not in a book yet. First, I'll be reading um, uh, Break My Heart in Ars Poetica from An American Sunrise, which is my uh, most recent book of poetry. And that poem is an Ars Poetica. You know, how do you write a poem? How does a poem mean? And I think a lot about certainly the time we're in and how we're uh, every day is a revision of a kind of a revision of personal history and a his we're trying to figure out how we're going to um, you know revise ourselves and how we're revising our understanding of our society and societies right now uh, next I'm going to read a poem, a part of a, two sections of a poem of the Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings in section one and then the last section. And um, parts of section one are actually inscribed in the poetry path. And uh, that poem was written, you know, like <laughs> the question I think we all have is human beings as poets is, you know, we're often dealing with conflict resolution, you know, deeply within ourselves and with time and uh, culture, cultures, um, and so on. So the last poem will be, um, what do they call it? The Life of Beauty, which is from, it's not a new book of poems yet. Right now I'm working on a memoir. And, uh, but this is, I think the only poem that I've written since I became U.S. Poet Laureate called uh, The Life of Beauty, which was written in response to a question, why is beauty, however defined, important in our lives? And I think at any point for me, but beauty is the touchstone. It's the, the place where I can, I can or we can land. It's often, found, it's often found in the earth or out in the natural world. Conflict Resolution for Holy Beings. I'm going to read section one, maybe it's the last section too. Section one, set conflict resolution ground rules. Recognize whose lands these are on which we stand. Ask the turtle, deer, and the crane. Make sure the spirits of these lands are respected and treated with goodwill. The land is a being who remembers everything you will have to answer to your children and their children and theirs. The red shimmer of remembering will compel you up in the night to walk the perimeter of truth for understanding. As I brushed my hair over the hotel sink to get ready, I heard, by listening, we will understand who we are in this holy realm of words. Do not parade, please, with yourself. You must speak in the language of justice. And the last section, and use what you learn to resolve your own conflicts and to mediate others' conflicts. When we made it back home over those curved roads that wind to the city of peace, we stopped at the doorway of dusk as it opened to our homelands. We gave thanks for the story, for all parts of the story, because it was by the light of those challenges we knew ourselves. We asked for forgiveness. We laid down our burdens next to each other. Next, I'm going to read um, this one, also from Conflict Resolution, called For Calling the Spirit Back from Wandering the Earth in Its Human Feet. I think the Earth is calling us back from wandering the Earth with our um, colonized feet. Put down that bag of potato chips, that white bread, that bottle of pop. Turn off that cell phone, computer, and remote control. Open the door, then close it behind you. Take a breath offered by friendly winds. They travel the earth, gathering essences of plants to clean. Give it back with gratitude. If you sing, it will give your spirit lift to fly to the star's ears and back. Acknowledge this earth who has cared for you since you were a dream 
planting itself precisely within your parents' desire. Let your moccasin feet take you to the encampment of the guardians who have known you before time, who will be there after time. They sit before the fire that has been there without time. Let the earth stabilize your post-colonial insecure jitters. Be respectful of the small insects, birds, and animal people who accompany you. Ask their forgiveness for the harm we humans have brought down upon them. Don't worry. The heart knows the way. Though there may be high rises, interstates, checkpoints, armed soldiers, massacres, wars, and those who will despise you because they despise themselves. The journey might take you a few hours, a day, a year, a few years, a hundred, a thousand, or even more. Watch your mind. Without training, it might run away and leave your heart for the immense human feast set by thieves of time. Do not hold regrets. When you find your way to the circle, to the fire kept burning by the keepers of your soul, you will be welcomed. You must clean yourself with cedar, sage, or other healing plant. Cut the ties you have to failure and shame. Let go of the pain you are holding in your mind, your shoulders, your heart, all the way to your feet. Let go of the pain of your ancestors to make way for those who are heading in our direction. Ask for forgiveness. Call upon the help of those who love you. These helpers take many forms, animal, element, bird, angel, saint, stone. Call your spirit back. You must call in a way that your spirit will want to return. Speak to it as you would a beloved child. Welcome your spirit back from its wandering. It may return in pieces and tatters. Gather them together. They will be happy to be found after being lost for so long. Your spirit will need to sleep a while after it is bathed and given clean clothes. Now you can have a party. Invite everyone you know who loves and supports you. Keep room for those who have no place else to go. Make a giveaway and remember, keep the speeches short. Then you must do this. Help the next person find their way through the dark. This poem is called Break My Heart from an American Sunrise. And it's an Ars Poetica, which is about how you write a poem. And I'm thinking about, you know, how we write our lives right now and how we'll be, we're rewriting our lives and we'll be putting our lives back together again in another way, like a poem after, after, during, before, and within this time. Break my heart. There are always flowers, love cries or blood. Someone is always leaving by exile, death, or heartbreak. The heart is a fist. It pockets prayer or holds rage. It's a timekeeper, music maker, or backstreet truth teller. Baby, 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 you can't say what's been said before, or even though even words are creatures of habit. You cannot force poetry with a ruler or jail it at a desk. Mystery is blind, but wills you to untie the cloth in eternity. Police with their guns, cannot enter here to remove us off our lands. History will always find you and wrap you in its thousand arms. Someone will lift from the earth without wings. Another will fall from the sky through the knots of a tree. Chaos is primordial. All words have roots here. You will never sleep again, though you will never stop dreaming. The end can only follow the beginning and it will zigzag through time, governments and lovers. Be who you are, even if it kills you. It will, over and over again, even as you live. Break my heart, why don't you? I guess the last poem is, uh, it's not in a book, it was published in the New York Times. And it's called The Life of Beauty. It was in response, written in response to a question, why is beauty, however defined, important in our lives? The life of beauty. The sun blessing of creation led her into the human story. That was the first beauty. 
Next beauty was the sound of her mother's voice rippling the waters beneath the drumming skin of her birthing cocoon. Next beauty, the father with kindness in his hands as he held the newborn against his breathing. Next beauty, the moon through the dark window. It was a rocking horse, a wish. There were many beauties in this age, for everything was immensely itself. Green greener than the impossibility of green, the taste of wind after its slide through dew grass at dawn, or language running through a tangle of wordlessness in her mouth. She ate well of the next beauty. Next beauty planted itself urgently beneath the warrior shrines. Next was beauty beaded by her mother and pinned neatly to hold back her hair. Then how tendrils of fire longing grew into her. Beautiful the flower between her legs as she became herself. Do not forget this beauty, she was told. The story took her far away from beauty to the tests of her living. Beauty was often long from the reach of her mind and spirit. When she forgot beauty, all was brutal. But beauty always came to lift her up to stand again. When it was beautiful all around and within, she knew herself to be corn plant, moon, and sunrise. Death is beautiful, she sang, as she left this story behind her. Even her bones, said time, were tuned to beauty. So thank you so much, Poets House and Lee, and uh, the poetry, the, to have that poetry path there is so incredible. And, you know, it's such a beautiful location there, right by the water and on that place of earth. And, uh, and it's wonderful to have a house of poetry sitting there, uh, holding up that, uh, that boundary. So thank you, Poets House, Lee, staff, um, poets, from generations back for for all of the inspiration and the love. It is love. That's what it's about. In the end, that's what it's all about. Okay, thank you. Nato. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give even a small donation if you can. Thank you.